Okay, gang, so I'm going to wander over to uh, Home Depot today and pick up some stuff. Uh, I've got on my birthday present from uh, Megan and uh, Brian. Yes, it says Perito on it. I don't think I'm that broke yet. <laughs> Where's Boomer? Got to see this, Boomer. But, uh, yeah, I'm uh, going to take a look at some stuff I need to finish and uh, get things going in here. Okay, so I just went to uh, Home Depot and bought everything I needed for, to uh, um, finish the, the kitchen. It's mostly just paint and paint gear and uh, I'll end up being able to use that for my work over at Nikki and John's and uh, the other and the uh, apartment building I'm gonna be working on. So, yeah, so very happy about that. I only paid, I only, it only uh, cost me about $100 of what I got. My brother gave me a $250 gift card, which is pretty generous. And uh, I also bought some stuff to fix other things around the house that have been annoying the heck out of me. So I will be doing that. Okay, guys, so I'll show you all I have to do to finish this kitchen. It's just a few things. Um, some of it's a little complicated. Some of it's not so complicated. Finishing the crown was the my biggest thing. So I had started the crown. I videotaped me starting this crown. I got all the way to here before I ran out of crown. So I purchased some more crown. And I have enough to do it. And always the question is, am I going to cut it correctly? Because it's always about how you cut it. There's a couple of things about crown that uh, I'll show you. Uh, it's probably a little complicated to put up, but once you have uh, you understand the uh, tricks, it's not bad at all. All right, so this is the crown. It's just a piece of it. And it leans against the ceiling and the cabinet. And it's a 45 degree angle going across. The big thing that you need to be aware of is that there is smaller details and a big scoopy detail and you got to make sure that that big scoopy detail is at the top that it, it's on the ceiling otherwise it, it ex, it's going to look kind of funny the other way around the other thing is when you're cutting it you have to cut it up against your saw at the 45 degree angle and you have to cut it upside down so you got to keep that in your mind which way is up which way is down and then decide where you're measuring from Okay, so this is going to be my first cut right here. And we have a 45 degree cut here because it's actually meeting at the corner at a 90 degree. So you have to cut this at 45, the other one at a 45, so you, you, you uh, add up to 90 degrees. So, then I measure from the end to the very edge of this. So when I do this corner, I have to cut that in half so that I have that meat in the middle. So it's going to be a 22 and a half inch cut on both sides to make that 45 degree cut. Does that make sense? I'll show you. Okay. So I have I have it marked, and it's marked on the correct side, which is always a big deal. I always uh, put a, a little mark on it showing which direction to make the cut, so I don't cut the wrong direction, and it needs to go this way. It tells you exactly where that is, 22 and a half. You don't have to try and figure it out. It even has a positive latch there. It'll it'll click in. This is a very standard cut, so it's not as something that you really need to worry about too much. You have always have your 22 and a halfs, and you always have your 45s, and you'll have it on both sides of zero, so you can cut it when you can, when you have to, and in the direction that you have to, and it needs to be upside down. This is where it swoops to the ceiling, so that has to be upside down. I'm cutting it in the right direction, and I gotta put it at 22 and a half going this way. And you hear the clicks, and I just clicked right into that. And if there's, it doesn't fit perfectly, you probably have to uh, readjust the your chop salt because it might be off. Okay, so I used to do this for a living and I really really trusted myself 
uh, on my measuring and cutting, I do not trust myself anymore. So I'm going to cut it a little on the long side just to make absolutely positively sure that I don't cut it too short then ruin a piece of wood. So I'm going to cut it long, I'm going to take it up, check it. If it needs to be cut down a little, I'll do that. Okay, so I cut a little piece of scrap wood so I could see my, my angle, see how well this fits, and this is a good fit. And now I just have to cut this, this next piece. This is an outside cut. This is going to be an inside cut. Uh, it's cut on the other side of the saw. So uh, those are, th again, things you have to look at. All right, so I'm ready to uh, shoot in uh, my first two pieces of, of uh, crown. Uh, I'm using my brad nailer with a one and a half inch brad. I was using finishing nails before, but it leaves a way too big a hole, I noticed. And I'll have to be filling those, and I'll show you what I fill them with when I'm done here. But, uh, so I have to make sure these are exactly where I want them, and then I could shoot them in. done. Got the longest piece. I needed Jay's help for that because I couldn't hold it. I just got this last piece and this section will be done. I have the longest section on this cabinet but I have to do something special over here because uh, these are cabinets that I had purchased at um, Home Depot and uh, they're Hampton Bay. They're pretty nice. They're, they're not bad. They're made out of maple, uh, dark stained. And for the most part, they have these uh, end panels. And it makes it flush, and you can put a crown around the top, and it's really nice. However, for their pantry, they decided not to make uh, a, a flush panel. So, there's this eighth of an inch lip. That's going to cause me all kinds of trouble trying to put that on, the crown on. So, I uh, got some... Uh, eighth inch plywood. I'm going to put it on the top here as a spacer and uh, then I can uh, put the crown over that. Okay, so the crown is up. I was hoping to get more done than crown, but uh, I'm happy that that's up. It really makes the cabinets look finished. Now I talked earlier about um, making sure that your chop saw is uh, accurate and then of course I didn't do that myself and I had some issues with some corners that I had to fix. Uh, I'll show you how I filled holes. I have a couple of things to fill holes. Uh, first thing I have is um, this is basically wax. It's, uh, it's just a big old crayon. Got, I got mine from Mohawk, but you can get it from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. And for the larger spots or cracks, like the, uh, the corners, um, I'm using a putty. And this is a Jasco putty. I don't even know if you can get this stuff anymore. It's ancient. Uh, but, um, and I looked at Home Depot and I didn't see any. So you may have to look elsewhere for it. Because you just have to make sure you match the color. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's it seems to me it's better if it's a darker color than the wood then it kind of blends in a little better unless it's a big a big hole or scratch then you have to uh, really try a little harder to make it match but uh, that's all I'm going to do left here is uh, fill all my holes all the nails and I have to put that door back up and I'm done I still have to do this crown And it's old crown, and I'm going to steal it from the front room. There's the same crown in the front room. It doesn't look good in the front room. It's painted poopy brown. 
I'm going to paint it white. I'll take it all down. I'll try to do my best not to destroy any of it. And I will put that up. And uh, the only thing that I need is an outside corner. Got one outside corner. I have one, two, three inside corners. I have plenty of inside corners. I have no outside corners over here. I must have thrown it away when I took it off. Silly me. Can't afford to just replace everything, so I'm gonna scrounge. And I'll let you see it. And see this horrible drop ceiling, 1970s era? It's all coming down to the next project. Okay, so that's it for me today. I uh, hope I didn't bore you. Val is still sick. She uh, basically didn't get out of bed at all today. Uh, I don't think she's feeling any better. I hope uh, this goes away soon. But um, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, it's getting better. It's almost done. Keep you informed. And I've got a stalker right now. What's up, Boomer? What you doing, Boomer? Are you looking over here? Is there food over there? All right. Well, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe. Um, share it with your friends and relatives and whatever. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, Val will be feeling well enough to do some vlogging.